this year, I want to start mixing things up a little on this channel. Instead of just talking about an entire series, I also want to discuss specific episodes. In this instance, the penultimate serial from Season 19 of Doctor Who. Earthshock. Before we begin, be warned this video will include spoilers. Earthshock is remembered for two things. The return of the Cybermen and the death of Adric. 1982 was a year of change for Doctor Who. After playing the Doctor for seven years, which incidentally is still the record, Tom Baker had finally handed over the role to Peter Davison. Davison gives a strong leading performance in this serial, having really hit his stride by this point. The Doctor's back and forth with the Cyber Leader is thoroughly entertaining. Your TARDIS has been found, Doctor. I didn't know it was lost. Their debate on the merit of emotions is a particular highlight. They also enhance life. When did you last have the pleasure of smelling a flower, watching a sunset, eating a well-prepared meal? These things are irrelevant. For some people, small, beautiful events is what life is all about. The Fifth Doctor had inherited three companions from his predecessor. Unfortunately, the writers rarely knew what to do with them all. While Tegan is heavily involved in the action, with Janet Fielding giving it her all, Nyssa is once again confined to the TARDIS for much of this serial. Is there nothing positive we can do? Try not to worry. Though Sarah Sutton was at least given more to do in the previous serial, Black Orchid. Matthew Waterhouse gives possibly his best performance as Adric in this serial. Excluding this scene, where the actor clearly knows the console in front of him is about to explode. Adric has been likened to Star Trek's Wesley Crusher. Shut up, Wesley! Both characters are generally unloved. Earthshock is very much Adric's story. Who's that boy? It's Adric! With the possible exception of Joe Grant in The Green Death, this was the first time a companion's final appearance really focused on them. His argument with the Doctor in Part 1 reminds viewers that Adric is, and always will be, an outsider. He is literally from another universe. This makes his eventual death hit home all the more, which arguably redeemed the character in many ways. Adric did return briefly as an illusion in the following serial, Time Flight. Adric! No! Adric's dead! How can we be sure? Go back, Tegan! Or you will destroy me. This scene was included in order to keep the character's departure a surprise, as Waterhouse was consequently credited in the cast listings. Earthshock also features a large number of supporting characters, all of whom feel real and established. Their various motivations all make sense. At first, James Warwick as Lieutenant Scott appears to be just another typical military-type character, and is initially distrustful of the Doctor. How do you do? I'm the Doctor, this is Tegan and Nyssa. I said shut up. What are we supposed to have done? However, across the four episodes, Scott proves to be both capable and intelligent. Whatever they are, they're going to be difficult to kill. You haven't tried yet. You look at those bodies. Same rifles as ours. So? Have you seen any of those silver things dead? While the rest of the cast was chosen by the director, Beryl Reed was cast as Briggs by producer John Nathan Turner, in a clear example of stunt casting. Many felt Reed was miscast. According to Davison, she didn't understand the story at all. You're trying to make a fool of me. Oh, I wouldn't dare. Personally, I think Reed's performance is a highlight. I think Mr. Ringway is recovering. Pity. I've just composed a particularly nasty epitaph for him. It is refreshingly unexpected to see an older female playing the captain of a freighter supported by a female first officer, no less. Earthshock features the first appearance of David Banks as the Cyber Leader, a role he would return to three times on television. Banks has also reprised the role on audio for Big Finish Productions. I should probably clarify, these are not all the same Cyber Leader. The 80s Cybermen are often accused of being too emotional. Excellent. Which is a fair criticism. However, while Banks' performance might be smug, he also made the Cyber Leader into an actual character. Earthshock is quite an unusual Cyberman story. Instead of their usual shtick of conquering and converting other lifeforms into Cybermen, here they are forced to work from the shadows in a desperate attempt to ensure their own survival. This serial uses the villains very effectively. The Doctor is constantly on the back foot, as he is consistently outmatched by an unknown adversary. He doesn't actually discover the Cybermen's involvement until Part 3. Cybermen. 
The cyber leader is shown to be intelligent and adaptive. Throughout much of the serial, it feels as though the Cybermen could actually win. So the freighter replaces the bomb? Yes, Doctor. In spite of your interference, we will still triumph. The moment Briggs realizes the full extent of the threat is truly shocking. They're an invasion force. Earth is where they want to go. There are considerably more than a few on board. How many of these silos are you carrying? Oh, 15,000. Or... It's not possible. It should also be noted that the Cybermen's plan actually makes a lot of sense. The Doctor's ultimate victory is achieved more through happenstance than actual planning. Even then, it comes at a cost. Earthshock was written by Eric Sayward, who had also written The Visitation two serials earlier. Sayward's writing on Doctor Who has proved polarizing, with some criticizing his darker, more violent take on the series. Nevertheless, I believe Earthshock is a very well-written serial. The pace is fast without feeling rushed. Part 1 opens with the action already underway. Despite later switching locations from an underground cave system on Earth to a freighter in deep space, the story never loses its momentum. Sayward keeps viewers interested by unfolding the plot gradually across the four episodes. Characters ask questions early on, which aren't answered until later. Tell me, Adric, why a bomb? Doctor? Why a bomb and not a missile or some other device? And why these particular caves? There's a reason. Do you remember what you asked me after we had deactivated the bomb? Why a bomb and not some other device? Well, with the Earth on red alert, a missile wouldn't get through. Mm. Sayward also makes good use of foreshadowing. You could hide an army down here and no one would find it. The Doctor's conversation with Nyssa and Tegan in the caves harkens back to the series' educational roots. How could such a successful species die out so quickly? Initially hypothermia, then starvation. Caused by what? An ice age? Something equally as devastating. The Earth collided with something from space. It also neatly sets up the twist in part four, that the Cybermen are indirectly responsible for the extinction of the dinosaurs. Do you recall the fossil dinosaur bones in the cave on Earth? What? And why it's believed they died out so quickly? Earth collided with a meteorite. Or something. A freighter? Even after the Cybermen have been revealed to the audience, Sayward still manages to build tension as the Doctor slowly begins to realise who he is facing. I've seen wounds inflicted this way before. The dialogue is very natural and is further enhanced by the cast's genuine performances. The organic character dynamics allow Sayward to mask some necessary exposition. There are a number of memorable lines throughout, including one which would come to define the character of Tegan. We'll never find him. You wanted to come. Oh, no, I'm just a mouth on the legs. The Cyber Leader also offers possibly the best summary of the Doctor's character in the entire series. A time Lord, but they're forbidden to interfere. This one calls himself the Doctor, and does nothing else but interfere. Sayward's scripts have often been criticised for their violence. For example, the Doctor very deliberately kills the Cyber Leader in Part 4. <laughs> However, most of the darkest moments in Earthshock are either implied or occur off-screen. Even the death of Susie Arden Snyder at the hands of the Cyberman's androids, quite literally, isn't gratuitous, but rather terrifying. Snyder, do you hear me? Get out of there! Bane and Collis are dead! Do you hear me? Snyder! Snyder! Get out of there! Snyder! Adric's death is surprisingly sombre. Unfortunately, the moment is somewhat let down by the visual effects. However, the performances of Fielding, Sutton, and especially Davison really sell the emotional impact. Doctor! The 2003 DVD release included optional CGI effects, which particularly enhanced this scene. In a subtle and poignant callback, Adric is clutching the sash which had belonged to his late brother Varsh. You saved our lives. You'd better keep this for him. The 
immaturity of his final line only adds to the tragedy. Now I'll never know if I was right. Taking inspiration from Coronation Street, the closing credits of part 4 play in silence. Some consider this too much, but it's important to remember this was the first instance of a companion dying since Katarina and Sarah Kingdom, who would both perish during the epic 12-part serial The Daleks' Master Plan almost 20 years earlier. Earthshock was directed by Peter Grimwade. Grimwade had directed three previous serials, including Adric's debut, Full Circle. He also went on to write three serials, beginning with Time Flight. The cast did not enjoy working with the director. However, many, myself included, believe Earthshock owes much of its success to Grimwade's direction. He built off Saywood's script to create a suspenseful, tense atmosphere, particularly in Part 1. The production team made good use of their limited resources. Unlike many of its contemporaries, the lighting in Earthshock is quite restrained. The finite sets are utilised very effectively, both in the caves and aboard the freighter. For example, the way in which the freighter's hold is shot, alongside the excellent model work, creates the impression of a sprawling maze. I don't fancy walking around that hard. The 26th century feels believably lived in. Though much of the technology eclipses our own, it doesn't feel brand new. Is that supposed to happen? What? It was a sort of flare. It only lasted a second. Ah, uh, probably nothing. This equipment changed. And... Earthshock has been compared to Ridley Scott's Alien, both structurally and tonally. Funnily enough, the Cyberscope prop was built using parts scavenged from the Nostromo set. The Cybermen don't actually appear until the very end of Part 1. Destroy them! Destroy them at once! While their involvement in this serial is now well known, this cliffhanger reveal was a total surprise to viewers at the time. Nathan Turner, who usually leapt at any opportunity to promote the series, was uncharacteristically determined to keep the Cybermen's return a secret. He even turned down Radio Times when they offered to feature the villains on the cover. Imagine the series pulling that off today. Following the use of archive footage in the season 18 finale, Legopolis, Nathan Turner was keen to use clips from previous stories to help reintroduce the Cybermen. While this may sound indulgent, it was in many ways necessary. The Cybermen hadn't appeared in Doctor Who since Revenge of the Cybermen in 1975, meaning viewers under 7 would have never seen them before. Remember, this was before home video. The scene includes footage from the Cybermen's first appearance opposite the First Doctor in The Tenth Planet, as well as their most recent appearance opposite the Fourth Doctor in Revenge of the Cybermen. While the Cyber Leader also refers to the events of the Tomb of the Cybermen, the footage shown is actually from the wheel in space, as the former didn't exist in the BBC archive at the time. Thankfully, it has since been recovered. The Cyber Leader's knowledge of these events suggests that these are the most advanced Cybermen the Doctor has yet encountered. However, it also creates a slight continuity error. Earthshock is clearly stated to take place in 2526. 26th century. The year is 2,526 in the time scale you call Anno Domini. Thank you. However, Revenge of the Cybermen takes place in part aboard Nerva Beacon, which the Fourth Doctor indicated in the Ark in Space wasn't built until the late 29th or early 30th century. I'd say this was built in the early 30th century. Oh, no. You don't agree? Early 30th century? Late 29th, early 30th, I feel sure. One possible explanation which has been suggested is that these Cybermen have travelled back in time in order to prevent the Cyber Wars. However, nothing in the serial itself directly supports this theory. Interestingly, the next Cyberman serial, Attack of the Cybermen, features the Cybermen using time travel in an attempt to rewrite their own history. The task of updating the look of the Cybermen fell to costume designer Dinah Cullen. Cullen worked closely with Richard Gregory from the independent effects company Imagineering. Nathan Turner suggested that the jaw pieces be transparent, so that the actors' mouths could be seen inside the helmet, to remind viewers that the Cybermen are in fact cyborgs, not robots. The costumes were fitted with radio microphones, to allow the actor's voice to be recorded live on set. The battery packs for these mics were taped to the inside of the helmet. However, over time the tape would loosen, causing the battery packs to slip out of place. The battery pack for David Banks' mic is infamously visible during the Doctor's struggle with the Cyber Leader in Part 4. 
One of the android costumes was repainted silver and used as the Raston Warrior robot in the 20th anniversary special The Five Doctors, where it, somewhat ironically, took out a whole squad of Cybermen single-handedly. Admittedly, Earthshock isn't perfect. It does feature a classic low-budget Doctor Who standoff with both parties mere feet from one another. The video effect used to swell the Cybermen's numbers at the end of part two isn't all that convincing. Though the shot was later replicated in the episode Nightmare in Silver. The preceding montage was actually far more effective. The incidental music for this serial was composed by Malcolm Clark. In addition to creating several memorable compositions, Clark also reused elements of Paddy Kingsland's score from Adric's first serial, Full Circle. This helped bring the character's story... full circle. Good luck, Adric. Bye, Doctor. Clark also rather effectively incorporated elements of the series' main theme into his score. One of the readings is ectopic, sir. What does that mean? That one of the life forms has two hearts. This serial includes a number of direct references to previous episodes, particularly in part one. The Doctor is shown to be reading George Cranley's book, Black Orchid, which was given to him by Lady Cranley at the end of the previous serial, also titled Black Orchid. Adric's room on the TARDIS contains several items from previous serials, including the skull mask worn by the Terraleptal android in The Visitation, and one of the necklaces worn by the Kinder tribesmen in Kinder. During their argument, the Doctor and Adric also blatantly refer to the events of the eSpace trilogy and Legopolis from Season 18. It would also involve passing through the CVE. Now, you can't calculate random coordinates. The monitor on Legopolis indicated they were not random. You do not have the monitor skill, Adric. And even if you did, I am not going back into eSpace. Then I will find someone who will take me. The Cybermen awakening aboard the freighter is reminiscent of similar moments in both the Tomb of the Cybermen and the Invasion. Earthshock also continues the series' long-running Cyberman foot fetish. With over 850 episodes of Doctor Who to date, choosing an all-time favourite is impossible. That said, Earthshock is definitely one of my all-time favourites. It's well written, tightly directed, and filled with great performances. If you're looking for an example of classic Doctor Who firing on all cylinders, I thoroughly recommend this serial. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Feel free to share some of your favourite Doctor Who stories. If you liked this video, why not give it a thumbs up? Maybe share it with a friend. Or an enemy. Either way, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to see more content here on Channel 73.